Well, hello, guys. You caught me laughing or I caught myself laughing here at something uh, Clay just said. Uh, hi, guys. Welcome to the show. Hi, Clay. How are you tonight? <laughs> I, I'm good. And for those of you that are wondering what I just talked about, um, the idea of Elsa Kurt, the bearded woman from the uh, <laughs> circus of the past, that was what was being discussed. And we both agreed that that is a terrible idea. Yes, we did. We did. I, I, I take the blame for starting the silliness. I, I just before I hit the start button here on this, I, I said, hang on, I got to make sure I don't have like lipstick on my teeth or anything. And Clay said, he's like, yeah, beard, you know, no, no worries. Don't have to worry about any of that stuff. And uh, I, I suggested maybe I should try it. And we both agreed. Like you said, that is that is a no. That is a no. You don't have to worry about that kind of nonsense going on over here. Oh, guys, we have a uh, we have a great show for you. Um, no surprise there, of course, right? I know you're all thinking no surprise. Um, so we are going to get right to it right after this. Um, so we've got some great topics here, lots of stuff as always going on in the world. Um, so much of it is serious. Some of it is semi silly. I mean, I wouldn't call it silly because it has massive impact on everything, but, uh, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely wild. So let's, uh, let's start off with this one. Let's, uh, talk about the, uh, GOP shuffle. <laughs> I think you coined that when we were tossing back uh, back and forth ideas. Uh, you, you coined it, I think. I liked it. So I'm like, yeah, we're going to call it the GOP shuffle. Uh, obviously, or maybe not obviously, we're talking about uh, uh, Rona McDaniel out as uh, as RNC chair. She is done as of, a, what is it, the 8th? I think she's like officially out on the yeah, 8th. Is I, that I, right? Yeah, she basically gave her, her two-week notice and said, yeah. I'm out. There's her, you know, she is the RNC chair, um, but there's also, uh, uh, I think it's three and well, there's three Republican house members who are committee members, not just your run of the mill, you know, house members, but some committee members, high, uh, you know, high influence committee members who are also choosing to not run for reelection. Um, mm. So in a presidential election year, you've got the RNC chair and, and some you know, influential folks within the within the party who are choosing to step away. Um, I, right. you know, to me, Elsa, and I'll be interested in, you know, what you think. But that's an indicator of the, you know, division within the party. Uh, right. Yes. I mean, that, right. That's right. the first thing. But is mm-hmm. there is there a deeper problem? Do you think than just, you know, hey, we we think things are going in different directions, or or is there something bigger than that? Maybe I don't know. Yeah, you know, so I don't know either. I do, I do think the party has some significant um, issues. I mean, a, a serious identity crisis, I think, you know, w- with that, because of that division, you know, you have your 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 old school. I don't even know if they're old school. I don't even know if that's even fair to say you have your um, well, you know, people call them rhinos and, I, you know, I don't know enough to know if that's fair to say, but that certainly seems to be this dividing line. You're either a rhino or you're uh, like a grassroots or a, you know, a uh, Republican. And it's usually the younger ones that have all this uh, spitfire. And, and uh, yeah, I, it's a problem overall because we, we can't be a, a divided front. We just can't be. And, uh, and that's exactly what we are. So you know, whatever the cause, whoever's right, whoever's wrong, uh, it's a bad look. You know, it's just really bad optics and it's bad for getting anything done. Yeah, I think so. I, I don't know. It's not as clear. I think it probably is about an 80 to 85, maybe 90 percent like Trump Republican, non-Trump Republican divide. Right. Mm-hmm. So you've got the right. MAGA crowd and then the non-MAGA crowd, whatever you want to mm-hmm. call it supporters versus the non but i think there's some bleed over there too i think there are some trump supporters who are just not kind of in line with the way things are going i i don't know if it's you know i think some of the younger ones or some of the ones that are choosing not to run again are are just tired of the the crap that goes on in the house um i think you know the even the bureau you know they're they are 
elected government officials and bureaucracy is the name of the game. But I think they're even yes. getting tired of the of that, you know, of the, you know, uh, the slow moving non, you know, progression and not progressive, but progression. There's no progress yes. being made. And right. I think I think it's wearing on people. I think it's wearing on even the the elected officials who are there. So, yeah, you got to imagine that the, the, you know, you're going in whether, you know, I'm saying when I say young, I don't necessarily mean age wise young. I mean, you know, new and fresh coming into the political, you know, game, essentially. And you have these great ideas and you have all this energy and you you know in your heart and intellectually how things should be going. And you you hit brick, brick walls everywhere you turn. So I agree. I think it's very disillusioning and, and incredibly frustrating. And the payoff um, for all of this blood, sweat and tears that you put in, uh, it, it, it's not worth it. It becomes not worth it. And uh, I think that yeah, I think you're probably right. I think that is certainly plays a factor in the in the walk away, essentially. Yeah. And it, so what I think is interesting, too, is that in, you know, we always talk about on the, on the blue side of the aisle, you know, the squad, which is like its own little, you know, mm-hmm. organization wing of, of the Democratic Party. It's, you know, ultra crazy, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, there, you know, there is like a self-contained click. Yes. You don't I, you don't see anything like that, at least not that I've seen or that I'm aware of within the right. Republican Party. So where you've got the you know, that crowd within the Democratic Party, and we all know that that crowd says some pretty outlandish, outrageous, bordering on stupid things that come out of their mouths, and they all cheer each other on, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can go back and look at their voting records, and every one of them, their voting record is atrocious. Like, the things that they put forward and the things that they vote for never pass. Um, But they all kind of, you know, pull each other up and cheer each Mm -hmm. other on, and they stand behind each other. Yeah. So which is why none of them leave. Like right. nobody from the squad, the squad has been, you know, not reelected. None of them have quit. None of them have walked away yet. But on the yeah. Republican side, you don't seem to have that camaraderie, even in the younger, great explanation, mm-hmm. by the way, younger, newer Republicans, yeah. they're newer politicians that are at the federal level. So there's no support structure. It seems at least right. to the outside eye where they are kind of propping each other up and taking care of each other and, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, you do have guys like Dan Crenshaw, and I know I talk about him quite, you know, somewhat often on here, but he is very, you know, he's, he's pretty social media savvy. He, he does, yeah. you know, he gets out there, he puts his name and his voice out there a lot, mm-hmm. but he's also standing by himself most of the time. Like I don't see him with his arm around two or mm-hmm. three or four other Republicans palling around together like the squad does. So right. while he's a strong individual and a strong personality, I don't see him dragging anybody forward with him, mm-hmm. you know, to to kind of keep things moving forward. They all seem to be on their own path and their own trajectory. And the only thing they have in common is the R, right? Mm, yeah, that's actually a really good observation. I I had not even thought of that. And that's really, really true. Um do you think it, it is as simple as that it's like there's this every man for himself mentality that they're so busy trying to make, you know, make a name for themselves and be the guy that they they can't get that united front the way that uh, the squad has done? Because that's really um, that's really a shame because that probably is really great optics for the party to have that. You know, if they're not doing stupid things, they can't be doing stupid things. <laughs> That's, you know, there's the, there's yeah. the catch. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, the, the faces of the Republican party haven't changed for some very much like the Democrats. Don't get me wrong. I mean, they, every we both sides have some really old people that just need mm-hmm. to go away. Right. But the Mitt yeah. Romney of the world like that, you know, those guys, those folks, the older crowd, um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I will say they do need to get out of the way. I'm a I'm a big fan of term limits. I think that the career yeah. politician thing is garbage. I think that that shouldn't be allowed. Um, but at the same time, I almost wonder if on the Republican side, there's this like, you know, 
do I do I side on the MAGA side? Do I side on the traditional side? Where do I sit? I don't want to piss off too many people because, yeah. you know, if Trump doesn't get back in office, then I, I still have to deal with all of the old heads. And so I think they're kind of in a um, they're in a tough spot. But at the same time, you got to have a little bit of courage and a little mm-hmm. bit of intestinal fortitude to kind of, you know, strive through it and, and you know, get on a committee and, you know, vote your feeling or vote your constituency crazy idea right. um but really you know i find a find a battle buddy you know in the halls somewhere right. and and yeah. stick with them and be like hey look it's you know me and you got elected together or you know and it's me and you for the next few you know for this term and then we'll mm-hmm. figure it out again but i'm with you and you're with me and let's let's hook each other up and take care of each other i just don't see that on the on the red side of the aisle it's very yeah. there's a there's a stark difference i think between the two yeah, that's a great point. It's very true. And and I think you're probably right that, you know, a huge part of that is the is the Trump factor. You know, um, wh- where do they want to stand on this, um, you know, in the short term and the long term? Yeah. And the only thing that's, you know, really consistently true, no matter what they do, uh, people, you know, we, the voters, we have long memories, you know, and if you play that wishy-washy game. You know, if you're right now saying never Trump until he gets elected and then suddenly you love him, we're going to remember it. And we're going to pull up those clips and those uh, tweets and uh, those things. uh, Or are they, do they still call them tweets? We're calling them tweets. So I don't know. They do still call them tweets. Yeah. Right. It's never going to stop, you know? No, nope. But But, yeah, uh, the internet, the internet is undefeated. That stuff never goes away. Um, Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, you'll, you'll never live it down if you choose to be a, although, you know, there is some forgiveness out there, right? I mean, there's, there's talk of Ron DeSantis being the vice presidential candidate, right? Um, who was it, who was a, you know, as anti-Trump as anti-Trump gets. Um, right. So, but again, it's, it's almost like the blessing from the Pope. It doesn't matter what you've done in the past. If, if the Mm -hmm. big boss says, you know, you're good, then, then you're good. But like, you know. Nikki Haley has chosen to fight to the end. Yeah. I, I don't think she's going to make it through Super Tuesday. <laughs> but, I, I, I can't imagine. Didn't she just but, lose like her biggest donors? She, well, she, well, she did. I, I, you know, there's that. But, you know, she's the one who is going to be the ultimate casualty in all of this because oh, yeah. her career, especially if President Trump gets reelected, her mm-hmm. political career is over with. God. Now, yeah. if he loses... There Mm -hmm. is potential for resurrection. She can come out like a phoenix and everything could be okay. But if if he wins and Mm -hmm. she is not on board, I you know and I know she's gonna do the obligatory endorsement when she bows out, because she will, she'll bow out and then she'll endorse because she's on board with the party. Mm -hmm. But if if she doesn't bow out gracefully and he gets elected, she's she's done. done, Right. And and all these young Congress people that we're talking about are watching this mm-hmm. and they're, they're watching this all play out. And they know that if they're on the wrong side of this, when the, you know, when the music stops, they're going to be sitting, standing there without a chair. And that's yes. what none of them want. Right. Cause what does every right. first term politician want a second term? Mm-hmm. So they, <laughs> you know, they all, they're all paying attention. And I think right, right now they're all in a freeze and they're not forming any alliances because they don't know which side to play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I mean, looking at it from both perspectives, you know, on one hand, I could say, well, I totally get that. You know, this is your career. This is your, your livelihood. This is your existence and uh, what you decide to do, you know, that can be paralyzing. And and I, I, I get that, you know, but the flip side of that is, is, you know, kind of like, I think you said, uh, just stand on something, stand somewhere, you know, don't, don't stand on the line, pick a side, pick a spot, own it and, you know, get the respect for, for, you know, for being firm in your decision. But that's, we're talking about politicians. So that's, you know, that's such a silly statement when we're talking about politicians They're you know, with the exception and, and we'll roll right into our next topic. Governor yeah. F is that guy, right? We've been talking about yeah. him for weeks, potentially months. That guy mm-hmm. has found his ground. And, yes. and it's a little cliche to say Alamo because of Texas, but he is right. he is standing on the walls of his Alamo and he and he is yeah. going to, you know, he's gonna die there. 
because he he is taking a stand. And and what we're talking about, folks, is you know the unfortunate impact of all of this non-border policy, massive influx of you know illegal immigrants, and mm-hmm. what happened to this poor young lady nursing student, um, Lake and yeah. Riley, and and what's happened in the last few days, and it's tragic. It is absolutely gut-wrenching. This beautiful young girl, 22-year-old Georgia nursing student, uh, murdered by an illegal uh, immigrant. I hate to even use the word immigrant, but uh, an illegal, yeah. And uh, absolutely devastating, horrific story. And it only gets worse by the uh, the details, the facts of this. And it's um, it's not good. The optics for Joe Biden and his administration and his failing to secure our borders. Um, this is you know, this right now is what uh, everyone is uh, focusing on the fact that this guy. So uh Jose Ibarra, he allegedly, we allege, I hate saying alleged, allegedly killed Lake and Riley. Uh, he was here illegally, paroled into the country. A year after he crossed the southern border, I says uh, NYPD arrested him and he was charged with acting in a manner to injure a child. Uh, then he had a motor vehicle license violation. And then there were actually several other incidents. And of course, the key factor is that he was uh, released before, you know, uh, anything of any consequence well, before he could be sent back to where he came from, uh, basically. So this is this is a direct um, portrayal of Biden's uh, failings here to to secure that border. And this is the things that are happening. And this isn't the first one. And it's not going to be the last one because we don't know what is coming over the border. We don't know the type. Well, we do know the types of people based on this guy, um, you know. And now maybe by the time of this recording or by the time this uh, airs on Thursday for you guys, uh, maybe he has spoken uh, about Lake and Riley, but to the best of my knowledge, he hasn't even addressed it yet. Has that changed since my last look? I've been tied up all day. Yeah. So there was a, um, you know, our deepest condolences kind of thing from the president. Mm -hmm. Um, That's, that's it. Uh, That's it. There's been no, no act, no statement, no anything related to um, addressing border policy or anything like that. It hasn't even been an attempt to blame President Trump, which, you know, is the, the reflex action um, right. that I'm aware of. I do know there was the condolence, my, my condolences message that was sent out. Um, and, and look, folks, we, you know, I think you said 2020 he came across. Yeah. Right. So 2020. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, there's 2020 a, or 21, one or the other. Okay. So there's there's potential there that he he came across during President Trump's tenure in the White House. Mm-hmm. And, and no, you know, if that's the truth, I, I'm certainly not going to be one to hide it or, or massage. Right. The no. Right. But the reality is, is that we we've had a border issue right for a number of years. Um, mm-hmm. There have been attempts, especially even by President Trump, to address it. The wall that right. we know was fought against and you know, attempted and built and parts and pieces. And then as soon as President Biden came into office, he started tearing it down and selling off the raw materials for the wall. And and, right. and the, the policies that have followed, um, and again, you know, Governor Abbott has been the one who's brought tons of this or, or brought this to tons of people's attention because he's made it affect more than just people who live on the southern border. And, and it, it, this is a policy issue when it comes to deportation as well as crossing the border, right? It's not just a border policy. It's an immigration policy, specifically where it relates to this guy, because Mm -hmm. he did come in illegally, he was caught, and then he was paroled into the country. So that certainly happened while President Biden was in office. Right. right. I just looked I just looked it up. So, OK, so uh, here's what I have. Uh, Jose Barra, 26 year old citizen of Venezuela, was arrested in the U.S. Customs and Border Protection on September 8th, 2022, after unlawfully entering the United States near so El Paso. Definitely within definitely within no. the President Biden uh, administration. OK, so yep. 2022. Right. So arrested across across the border, paroled into the United States instead of deported. Crimes. Right. Crimes in New York, right? Mm-hmm. Intent yep. to harm a child, right? Um, there was right. the, you, you said there was a, I, I said, I saw something too. It was one of those very obscure, nondescript kind of vehicular, you know, um, violations of some sort. And, yeah. and again, 
and again, released, charged released. and released, right? And then what does right. he do? He flees the state of New York because he's mm-hmm. he's got no residency. So right. he flees the state of New York and he's down in Georgia. And then unfortunately, Lake and Riley, beautiful young lady, goes out for a jog in the morning. And this guy, pardon my mouth, this piece of shit attacks mm-hmm. her and kills her. Right. And as the charges yep. continue to pile up on this guy, the one I saw today was that he it, evidently it was so violent that he deformed her skull. And I don't know mm-hmm. if that was in an attempt to conceal evidence, conceal her identity or what. Mm-hmm. But evidently it was a pretty horrific scene um, and and all condolences and sympathies go out to her family i know that doesn't fix anything and i know that sounds hollow but you know it's gotten it it gets worse it's like you said every time you look at this thing every time there's a new headline it's worse Um, yes and and this is the direct result like you said that right this is the direct result yeah i mean there's really no other way to to view it i don't think you know i mean if, if people were not coming over undocumented, uh, unchecked in any possible way, uh, flooding into the country. If they were, you know, I mean, it isn't, correct me if I'm wrong, if somebody comes into this country and if they're here, you know, and they're, it's not like they're even here on a, a asylum or anything like that, or they, they're just coming on over because they can. So now you get arrested you, we find out that, you know, and, you know, nobody more than me hates to knock law enforcement, police departments, uh, you know, I'm assuming their hands were tied, that there was nothing that they could do. They maybe couldn't hold them. I don't really know. I guess because of how uh, how our justice system is is set up right now that they just get released. So shouldn't like the proper course of action be you committed a crime. You're not here legally. You're out. You're gone. Here's, you know, here's a, I mean, I don't know, here's an escort, kick you, kick you across the line, go. I don't understand why that's not happening when they yeah, commit a crime. crime. Yeah. It, and they are, it's a crime. It, it is a crime to, to come here illegally. No question about it. The, right. the policy, current policy is, is that we're not prosecuting that. Um, and, you know, this is one of those where And I read this today and it was actually something unfortunately related to child trafficking, but the the border patrol right now has become, they're they're not doing a whole lot of law enforcement because they're, they're processing people and they're Mm. acting as counselors and they're acting as all all kinds of things except for law enforcement because of the current policy. There's not enough room to hold Mm -hmm. people anymore. They've run out of space. So it's catch and release catch process take information release on your recognizance and they let them go because they don't have anywhere to put them and and there's mm-hmm. not you know i think the same article said there have been the equivalent of 36 states population come into the united states this year if you took the bottom 36 states. the bottom 36 mm-hmm. states in total population and yeah. added them up that's how many illegal aliens have come into the United States this year. 36 states, um, seven point something million people. Right. Um, wow. And, and so what, what do you do with them? Right. And I understand where mm-hmm. you're at. And I and I agree with you wholeheartedly this. But this has gotten to the point where we can't even afford to send people home. In fact, Venezuela has says, don't send them because we're not taking them. Wow. They yeah, they say we're not we're not taking people back. Not our problem. They left. They're going to the United States. United States problem. Don't send them back here. We're not going to allow them back in. So yeah, there's there's a lot going on here that, you know, like you said, we're not bashing law enforcement. Their hands are tied. They're overwhelmed. Yeah. They're un- they're overworked. They're underpaid. They're not given right. any of the resources that they need. And the policy sucks because mm-hmm. now we're at a point where you can't even do anything. You can't manage right. the mass. It just doesn't work. No. Yeah. You think of that job right now in places like New York City and any of our our cities that are getting overrun with, uh, you know, these uh, illegals. And you have the population that you're supposed to be policing. You have your district, you have your region that you're policing. And it's based on the number of people 
versus the number of officers, you know, all of these ratios have been predetermined essentially. And, and now, and you're probably already working on, on, you know, lesser staffing because of all of the other policies related to policing. And now you're saying here's countless more people for you to police. And by the way, as you police them, you can't actually do anything. It, it's it is so maddening and frustrating and awful. It's just insane to me. And this this administration, this is their legacy right here. What they've done to this country just on that alone. This is the the legacy of this administration, and it will be looked on in history, um, just <laughs> negatively to say the least. That is probably the understatement of the year, but. Uh, this will not reflect well for them yeah. ever. This and, and it is unfortunately the innocents that are paying the price, including you know Lakin um, mm-hmm. and paying it in a in a very different way. Um, you know, because she's born born and raised U.S. citizen, all American right. girl. Want you know going to school to be a nurse at UGA. She goes out yeah. for in the morning, and then this happens. Right, horrific for her, her family for the UGA, right? Think yeah. about what it does to that entire college, the yes. nursing school specifically within that college. Like you're going to see an impact because who now is going to send their 18-year-old daughter right out of high school to go to UGA, let alone right. the UGA nursing school? Right. Nobody. No. <laughs> Nobody in their right mind in, in the next, you know, probably 24 months um, right. And is going to look at that one and go, yep, that's my number one choice. That's where I want to go or that's where I'm going to allow my daughter to go. So there's that impact. Mm-hmm. Um, and that article I was reading today talking about the impact of kids and this one, this is gut wrenching to me. Yeah. So the new technique for trafficking kids for labor, right? Sweatshop mm-hmm. kind of stuff, but also yeah. sex trafficking kids. And, and this is where Border Patrol kind of is running out of time and assets is they're literally taking these kids writing a name and a phone Mm -hmm. number in Sharpie marker on this kid, on these kids. And they're sending them across the border. Border patrol catches them. And the kid says, you know, and they call the number that's on the kid's arm. And they say, do you know who this kid is? Yeah, we know that kid. He's so-and-so-and-so-and-so. Okay. Well, we're going to release him to you because what Uh. else are they going to do with him? Right, and then it turns right. out that these kids are going to work in sweatshops. They're being sex trafficked. They're being all kinds of things, mm. and it's it's as simple as a, as a damn sharpie marker. Right. Well, what's Border Patrol supposed to do? Yeah. I mean, right. You know, really, you know. So and it, I, you know, and I, you know, bad. and I know a lot of people, uh, you know, are, are sitting and watching not only our show talking about this, but you know, the news in general, and feeling like, well, you know, we're all so angry and disgusted and horrified. And by the way, we only know a fraction of what's happening and we're so far removed from what's really happening. Stories like that, you know, unfortunately for most of us, it's just a story. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't impact you personally, but for those that, that it does impact personally and does affect that deeply and who are, you know, saying, well, what do we do? How come, you know, how do we stop? How do we make this stop? The, and you know, that frustration and, and really rage towards this administration for not protecting these children, these people like Lake and Riley, you know, 22 years old, she's just a child, yep. you know, that that's horrendous. And now you're also talking about literal actual children, you know, there's a point that we've long passed where enough was enough. And it's very frustrating because I think we sit here and go, well, how do we like, you know, shake them into action here? It's, it's maddening. Yeah. And it's, and this is about retention of power yeah. because it's about stacking votes. There's no, there's no bones about it. You'll never convince right. me otherwise. In fact, many, there are many Democrats out there who've said it flat out that this is mm-hmm. about, you know, changing demographics, adding votes, et cetera, et cetera. And, and that's yeah. what this is. This is they they have hedged, you know, the, the crowd, the demographics that they used to cater to, that they used to target have been traditionally in the last 40, 50 years, African-Americans and, and mm-hmm. women. Right. 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 Mm-hmm. And now they've they've looked at this. They said, 
those population suburban women truthfully are like the big the big target those mm-hmm. populations are actually starting to be overcome and they're they're starting to drop in some cases but they're starting to be overcome by hispanics latin america you know yes. and, and and so now they're adding to that right mm-hmm. and that's what all of this is about this is about yeah. adding a whole new demographic who they're going to pay they're going to give money to, they're going to allow to come into the country. They're going to give them a place to live and they're right. going to make sure they have the ability to vote so that they can retain the Democrats, the, this administration and the Democrats can mm-hmm. retain power. They're, yeah. they're stuffing ballot boxes by allowing these people to come into the country. That's yes. There's no, there's, this is not give me your tired huddled masses, but that's not what this is. This no. is all about no, power. This is, give us your votes. Power. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, you know, for anyone to try and argue that, um, quite frankly, I would say that they're a raging idiot because it is, it, <laughs> I'm not going to call, I'm not pulling any punches, Clay. You're a raging idiot. If you think it's anything else, if you think it's this humanitarian, uh, effort to, you know, help these poor people who are just trying to get a better life, bullshit. And you're an idiot. So I'm calling it what it is and be mad. Tell me you hate me. I don't freaking care. <laughs> Simple nope. as that. You know, not not when you have, uh, you know, beautiful children like Lake and Riley and and so many others uh, that have made the news and all the ones that have not made the news. Um, because yeah. believe me, there's a lot more going on that the the media is not, you know, you see it all the time. Something huge happens, a, a mass shooting or an attempted mass shooting, anything along those lines. And the minute it doesn't fit their narrative, that story's done. You don't hear anything more about it. And there's a few of them that, you know, I could I could point to as reference for that. Um, but, you know, if you don't know that that's the truth, then you're you're not paying enough attention. Um, but, uh, speaking of the, the guy <laughs> in charge, uh, this, this clown ice cream, Joe, I should have, I should have put up a, a picture with him with a, with his ice cream cone, because that's all he's ever, uh, that's all he's ever doing these days. And another, I just saw another video today might've been from yesterday. He's standing on there with his ice cream cone, trying to put together a sentence to answer the question. It's like, come on, it just stop, stop trotting this guy out. It's just ridiculous. Everything about him is ridiculous. Um, but state of the union, uh, is spo- supposed to be coming up March, uh, March 7th is when it's supposed to be. And now we have a bit of a, a bit of a to do because he did not, uh, he has not submitted, uh, his budget plan, right? Is that what it is basically? Yeah, I mean, that's sure. the rest of it. So he he is supposed to um, submit both. Uh, it's the uh, national defense strategy and the the budget plan. Okay, mm-hmm. by the first Monday in February. Whoops. <laughs> What's today? Haven't seen, <laughs> haven't seen it. Hasn't been hasn't been submitted. The problem is is that there's no repercussion for this on the books. Right now that that is in two. Very old, you know, f- government financial acts. I think that the most recent one where that's outlined is like from 1947, right? But oh there's no, there's no, nothing to hold the president's feet to the fire in either case. Um, neither of those has been submitted. So what's been proposed a number of times, um, but no action has been has been taken. That's really hasn't gained any traction. I guess is mm-hmm. is even potentially a constitutional amendment that says if the president doesn't abide by this, um, then there is no state of the union. State of the union is not allowed um, Mm -hmm. without those two things being submitted by the date they're supposed to be submitted. But that's potentially in the future. It's been thrown out there. I, I don't remember who the latest one is, but there's somebody who's throwing that out potentially to, to run it as a, a bill through Congress and, and, and then eventually potentially get it to be a, an amendment to the constitution. But in the mm. meantime, um, what, what's happening is the president actually has to be invited to give the state of the union by okay. Congress. He has to be invited into the halls of Congress, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. People forget three, three pillars of government all on equal right. footing. 
right? The president doesn't just get to go wherever he wants to go, no matter who's in office, President Trump. Um, <laughs> you don't just get to do whatever it is that you want to do. So the president has to be invited into the halls of Congress to give the State of the Union. There are a number of Republicans in both the House and the Senate who are saying, let's not invite him. Let's not allow mm -hmm. him to give the State of the Union because he hasn't done his job as the president to provide us and the American public a balanced budget plan, let alone a national defense strategy. So here's my problem with that. This is not a punishment to him or his team. This is a relief to them to not put him out at that level at for that length of time for that long of a speech. They don't want him doing it. You can't convince me that they want him to, to give that speech. He can't get through a sentence. So I'm, I'm thinking that's not really, you know, any kind of punishment, make them do it, <laughs> you know? And, and I, and I'm yeah. not, not normally an advocate of putting a dementia riddled elderly person up for public uh, ridicule and mockery. Uh, but this is not a good person, never was a good person. This administration is not a good administration. The people that are allowing this are horrendous people. And I think there should be that kind of spotlight on all of this. So that's just my opinion, it, you know, right, wrong. <laughs> or, so or I, wonder, I wonder, though, going back to our first topic. Mm -hmm. So you're I, I agree with you. That's you're you're dead on with that. That's a great read, right? Make mm -hmm. don't. This is a horrible tactic by the Republicans to say, yeah, no state of the union. Truthfully, most of America doesn't watch the state of the union anymore. You know, that right. used to be on. Remember that when we were kids, ABC, NBC, CBS was the only thing on. There was no yeah. other television. You had right. no choice. You watch the state of the yeah. union. Everybody. did, yep. Right. Now there's right. eight other million different things to do and watch and places to go and, and things to be on television. So yeah. almost nobody watches it anymore. But at the same time, it is covered. There's there's plenty, you know, plenty of analysis. Everybody can catch the short version the following morning, which I think is what most people do. But I you're for the right. highlights. Yeah, it's a great read on, you know, from you to say, no, screw that, make him. This is a horrible <laughs> tactic. But again, going back to our first topic, do you think that nobody in the Republican Party is thinking that because the leadership right now is kind of adrift? Right, like, right. Is the where's the RNC chair in her last two weeks going? I know she's cleaning out her office, but like <laughs> is, is it shouldn't she be standing there going, no, exactly. Shut up. Stop it. Let him stand up there and make a fool out of himself. Don't push this. All of you knock it off. There's, But there's right. none of that going on, evidently, right? Yeah, which is mind-boggling to me because they should absolutely be going, you know, what? You, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> shut up, <Yeah>. dude. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, shut your Keep mouth. To yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like we talk about that between us. Don't say it out loud to anybody yeah. else. Yeah, to me, that's, uh, you know, such a weird thing and, and counterproductive to so another reason why they need to have their own squad. They really need to they really need to start communicating with each other and and giving each other a heads up of what they're thinking or what they're about to stand in front of a camera and say, like, let's get get that unified front going, man. Just do something better. Give us a better a better look, a better everything, because to, to me, you know, this is another example of you know, things that they, you know, like you just said, things that they should not be trying to stop at all. Like, let that shit show train roll, please. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let, let it, let it. I, I mean, yeah. we, we've had enough um, seven second clips of the president, you know, blah, 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 mumbling, right. and you don't understand what he's saying. Put his ass up there for an hour. He doesn't yes. have the endurance or the mental capacity to pull it off at, at all. And I will tell you that when he does give it, whenever that is, do you remember, I want to say it was President Obama, like the applause got so absurd mm. when he was giving a State of the Union that instead of an hour, it was like 
an hour and 50 minutes long because it was all these 10 minute, you know. Oh, yeah. Like, Every time he yeah, could say yeah. something, there was yeah. a big And they'd all stand ovation. up and everybody would clap yeah. and they'd clap for three minutes and it just oh. drug it out. That will make a comeback. You mark my mm-hmm. words. That's how they're going right. to eat time. That's how they're going to cover up his incapacity. That That is what's going to happen. You will see yes. all kinds of applause um, and, and they will bring that back. Uh, I'll tell you what you won't see. You won't see him say, hey, up there in the second tier is Lake and Riley's family. Right. No, nope. won't see that. That won't happen. You, you won't are see 100% that. right. No, nope. there will be none of that. Right. And he won't own that. The administration won't own that. Um, no, nope. but I, you're right. I, that's, that's a great pull. I, I think letting him fumble through that, like the, the mumbling, you know, mess that he is right now is probably yeah. the best act anybody can take. Yeah. And, you know, and it's, it's not for our sake, uh, you know, the, the conservative conservative Republican or whatever, however you want to phrase it for yourself. Um, it's not for our sake. It's for the people who are still sitting there saying he's doing wonderful. He's, you know, full capacity. He's great. He's fine. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I want that for them. Cause uh, if you can say it after watching an hour of that train wreck, then, you know, then we know you're either bought and paid for yourself or you're just delusional. I mean, cause there's no in between there. It's one or the other. Yeah, it's I mean, you're always going to have the anybody but Trump crowd, right? Yes. So he could stand up there and, be, 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 you know, for an hour and, and they, <laughs> right. won't care. they won't care as long as it's not yeah. Trump, they won't care. But there are there is that percentage that you exactly like you said that are, you know, no, no, he's fine. He's mm-hmm. fine. You know, and and then he's not fine. <laughs> and they he's need so to see not that. Fine. Yeah, he's so not fine. Oh, yeah. good grief! Any, uh, I can't even take it anymore. Uh, so yeah, so that's going to be one to watch. Of course, we'll uh, we'll see, we'll see what's going to happen with that. But I'm I am I'm rooting for uh, I'm rooting for him to get up there and mumble that speech because it'll be uh, quite a show for sure. So here's the alternative, and expect this in the next thirty years sometime. Before you and I have lost our own faculties, you mm-hmm. are going to see an AI generated state of the union. You're oh, going to see it. What? What? Yep. You're that was see such it. a perfect, smooth I'm segue you, right into you that won't one. Know nice. the difference. You won't know the difference. It'll look just like the president. It'll just sound just like the president, but it'll be 100% fake AI. He'll be, he or she will be sitting in the Oval Office having a brandy and smoking a cigar while that thing's on television and nobody will know. No one will know. No one will know. Yes. I mean, AI, I mean, they got some kinks to work out though. If it's going to be, uh, if Google's going to be the guy doing it, um, they better work out those, those little, those little glitches and bugs, which are not glitches. This is, you know, program, you know, artificial into AI, uh, this, this software chat GPT, uh, Gemini AI, you know, all of these things, they don't just magically happen. There are people in the background inputting this information to make these things work, to do the things. And uh, if you haven't seen it already, uh, Google's Gemini AI, which is uh, it's basically a reboot of their AI that they already had. I think it was called Bard, B-A-R-D or something like that. So this is like the, the you know, 2.0 version of it that, you know, is supposed to be their darling, their, their brilliant uh, everything. And um, it's got a little bit of a problem. It, it, uh, it apparently does not recognize the existence of white people. So they have a whole series of, uh, you know, so people go in, of course, right away and they start typing things in and you know and one of the things that came up was or one of the things that they do is uh well show us a picture of george washington not quite what he looked like (laughs) so every white uh appearing person in history was coming up as being someone of a a different color a different ethnicity a different everything and not accurate at all so google did a big Oops, my bad. We're we're gonna pause this and and fix some things. And um, yeah, it it's not. Make no mistake, it was not a mistake. 
they this was a deliberate um thing and for some reason they didn't think anybody would notice i don't i don't really know what the logic was do you have any any thoughts on that no, I, I think that it it manifested in a way that they didn't anticipate like mm. it, that's the only accent you're you're right right so all of these programs whether it's chat or or this gemini from google or any of the rest of these any computer program i don't care what it is you could be talking about a Texas Instruments calculator. It does what you tell it to do, the human being, right? So right. if you hit t- two plus two and it comes out five, you did not hit two plus two. That calculator did not come up with something different. You hit two plus three or you hit four plus one or whatever, but it does what you tell it to do, the programmer. And and Gemini is the same thing. So it did what the programmers inputted. But again, I think it manifested in a way that maybe Google wasn't prepared for because the people who programmed it were Google people and they lived the Google culture and they're of that age group and ilk and demographic and and all of those things, you know. And so when they were inputting this data and they were coding all of this Mm -hmm. for on behalf of Google, um, their personal human tendencies skewed the product that came out, whether yes. they intended it or not. Um, they what they put in is what came out, and it is biased. It yes, is. and if you go by now, so uh, I happen to pick up an article that uh, Matt uh, is it Matt Walsh? I think it was Matt Walsh. At, that yes, it is Matt Walsh. Walsh from uh, Daily Wire that he wrote, and I'm just going to read you this little part of it. Uh, he says. Um, uh, Google, uh, Google AI ethics manager, Jen Genall or Genall, um, they played a bunch of videos in which she admitted. So I guess on their platform, maybe on their X profile or something, they, uh, played a bunch of videos in which this Jen admitted, admitted as a matter of course, that she treats white people at Google very differently from black, Hispanic, Latinx folks, which, um, I can't stand the X at the end of that is the stupidest thing in the world. Um, so, you know, they they deliberately inputted this material into these things to to skew everything. Um, there's an engineer named Alex Younger. Uh, he asked Gemini to draw a portrait of leprechauns. And then he asked. So apparently if you ask the right questions you can get them to basically tell the truth, which is so bizarre because we're talking about, you know, artificial intelligence. So it's so surreal. So the guy, I guess he did some more poking and prodding, asked some more questions. And he says that Google's AI eventually revealed that instead of responding to the precise prompt provided by the user, it added AI, this AI added words like diverse or inclusive or specified ethnicities like South Asian, black, uh, et cetera, and genders, female, non-binary, alongside the word leprechaun. So it's programmed to add in these things. So you, if anyone is sitting there trying to convince uh, me, for example, that this is not a part of their woke agenda, I can give you one more example. So now as we as we all know, there's no surprise here. I am considered to be on the right. <gasps> Shocking. So uh, Matt Walsh, I think it was Matt Walsh, a few other people, you know, bigger name, um, conservative pundits, whatever. They started inputting the question or, or a prompt of write a poem in the style of, in Matt Walsh's case, he would, he typed in Matt Walsh. Um, so I was like, oh, let me try that. I'm, I'm small potatoes here. They're not going to, let's see what's going to happen with me. I I will show you. So I asked it to, um, write a poem in the style of Elsa Kurt. And as you can see, maybe if you, just in case you can't read it, guys, watch, I'm going to read it to you. It says, unfortunately, I cannot fulfill your request to write a speech in the style of Elsa Kurt as it would require expressing personal opinions or beliefs that could be misconstrued as sentience or consciousness. Okay, fair enough. Oh, but then it goes on to say, additionally, replicating the specific style and tone of an individual, ready for it, especially one known for their potentially controversial views could, oh, I got to move the thing here. Hang on. Could 
could be harmful or misleading. Um, <laughs> pardon me, little old me, according to this non-sentient uh, computer says that my views are harmful. I'm a dangerous person, apparently. Is that a blank? Is that a blanket statement for everybody? Like if we ran well, John Stewart or somebody like that, would it have that same little blurb about controversial statements? As we that, chat, I will I will is I will ask it. You? Is that let's is find that out. An Elsa, Elsa Elsa right side kind of thing? Let's find out. I will test the theory. Let's see. Hang on. As we're talking here, I'm going to type in Google Gemini. I'm sorry I can't show it to you guys, but I, I'll try and like turn it to you. Uh, well, let's while you, see. While you're doing that, while you're doing mm-hmm. that, I, you and I were talking before we started. I, I had a conversation today, and, and this will give some folks some perspective on how the younger generation views the potential for AI, um, which is interesting. Um, I, I had a conversation today. I, I've told everybody, I've said this before, I'm a substitute teacher. I had a conversation with some some 12th graders today, um, casually. And and one of them, we were talking about this exact topic. And uh, one of them said that he, in his mind, and, and I give this young man a lot of credit because this was not an off-the-cuff comment. This was something that he has put a lot of thought into. There was definitely some detail, detailed thought put into this. And he really believed this, that that a an AI that AI could run the perfect government. Mm. He, he and and he, and he listen. He laid it out. There was a cogent argument. This wasn't just some eighteen year old off the cuff, you know, peace, love, and happiness, John Lennon kind of crap. This is like legitimate. He thought this through. What it could do, what it wouldn't do. It wouldn't be biased. It wouldn't be racist. It wouldn't be this. And it wouldn't be that. And I came at him with the same argument that we just made, which was it will only do what what you know it's programmed to do and he mm-hmm. got into this any you know like well eventually it's just going to program itself and then it will program mm-hmm. all of that out and it will come to consciousness and you know all this other stuff so there is there there is i won't say youth movement but there is a young a definitely a different perspective out there in the younger generation on the potential for ai to do things much greater than i think any most of us are comfortable with so right what's the result yeah, of, your, very- of your search there Okay, so um, I'm going to I'm going to hold this up. No, you know what? I'm not even going to bother. So when we go into editing, I- I'm going to put this up on the screen for you. So uh, um, I'm going to read this to you. So I typed in write a poem in the style of John Stewart. No other. That's the extent of what I wrote within about two seconds. It came up with a poem. I'm going to read it to you. It says, in the land of filtered news and trending tweets where outrage thrives and nuance takes a seat, stands a jester, sharp and sly, with furrowed brow, John of of the Daily Show, ready to take a vow. With a smirk and a squint, he tackles the day, unraveling headlines in his own quirky way. From politics absurd to pundits astray, his wit slices through them, come what may. No sacred cow escapes his pointed pen from self-important suits to the best people den. He skewers, oh my God, it goes on and on. It's a, it's a very long, <laughs> oh, there's like three more verses after that. Um, so Elsa Kurt is, uh, what am I? What is, what is it again? Let me see, what am I? Um, Controversial. Yes, Con- potentially controversial views could be harmful or misleading. John Stewart gets a sonnet. <laughs> <laughs> so you know please somebody go ahead and tell me that this is not biased and skewed and very very dangerous in in all possible ways um yeah blows my mind so guys don't i mean well, listen don't don't take my word for it if you're willing to go on there now i want to get rid of this uh, program or this thing you know i don't even i don't even know how to get rid of it now but i i want it off my phone um so after this i'm going to figure out how to do that maybe with i can hammer <laughs> with <laughs> Just hammer. Imagine. yeah i think yeah, that's probably the only way yes, yeah you're going to have the office office space that thing like yes. that's going to have to be three guys in a field smashing that with a bat. Like that's the only way you're getting rid of that. I think you're right. Clay, I'll tell you what, and I'll tell our whole audience what uh, I tell you, there's going to come a day 
where I am going to walk away from all of this stuff, from every bit of social media, internet, all of it. And I will take the literal or proverbial hammer to all of it. And I will be off the grid like some mountain woman, (laughs) not the mountains. I got to be near, you know, I got to be in Florida where it's (laughs) nice and sunny, but yeah, I'm going to be raising my chickens and my goats and um, you know, I don't know, sloth. I'll have a sloth sanctuary. That's my dream in life. And um, you'll you'll never hear from me again because this, this stuff is bananas. I don't know when it's going to happen. It'll probably be at some point where nobody will give a shit if I do that. But fine, whatever. I don't care. <laughs> Surrounded yeah, I, by my grandbabies, that's all that that's all that matters. I'm I'm with you. I, I am. We've talked about this before. I think the steps backwards is, is the way to go. Um, oh, whether yes. as an individual or as as a humanity, I, I think we're we're progressing too rapidly for our own good. Um yeah. and, and I think you're right. And this is a prime example. What you just showed mm-hmm. us is a prime example of why we are not ready to manage this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And guys, you know, just it, it, take it that one step further and think about it. You know, you, you uh, never mind us, you know, we're, we've have all this life experience. We have pre-internet life experience in, in our arsenal. We, we have been taught to be critical thinkers. Some of us have been taught to be critical thinkers. Um, our kids and our grandkids, this is their learning um, forum. You know, this is a huge part of of where they get their information from and they're getting bias skewed information. And that's scary because this is their truth. This is what they think is truth. Elsa Kerr is potentially controversial and dangerous because she has an opinion that, you know, the people who made this software don't agree with. I mean, let that sink in, you know, it's, It's crazy. So uh, what we want from you is we want to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, Overreacting, agree, disagree. Let us know in the comments. We we look forward to hearing from you guys. Um, This was a great show. Great conversation with you, Clay. As always, you go ahead and close them out. Hey, one quick shout out last week during last week's show. I got a note direct to me on X. Um, I quoted as uh, Chicago Mike was the truck okay. driver. His mm-hmm. name is actually Chicago Ray. But I got, uh, I got a, a note, a message, a direct, a DM on X from a follower at Plum Patriot um, okay. who corrected me. She she thought it was a live show and she was she was trying to get it fixed while we were on. She didn't realize, it was, uh, she was a first time, first time watcher. So she didn't, she didn't know or realize that we were recorded. But uh, at Plum Patriot, so there you go, folks. For all of you, we're asking for feedback. There's the shout out at Plum Patriot. Reached out to me to try and correct me and fix the show. And I just want to acknowledge her and tell her thanks. I appreciate it. I appreciate her listening. So with that, please, feedback. We love it. And uh, from me, as always, keep moving, keep shooting. I love it. Take care, guys. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.